when needed. Uh, Northwestern's run game doesn't really have any misdirection or anything special. It's similar to what we saw with Michigan, and I think that's what you're going to see this week. This game reminds me just like the 2000, uh, well, 2014 situation where the Buckeyes blew out Wisconsin by 50 points to later become national champions. So I think the Buckeyes win handily here. I think it's going to be something like 42 to 10, 35 to 17, something like that. This should be a very easy cover for them. I love Ohio State minus 13 and a half or minus 14, obviously. The next game going to the MAC championship. Now, you know from talking all year in our last podcast, we have a significant influence on Buffalo, being that we have the 12 to 1 ticket to win the MAC, right? And now they're favored, which made it the hedging easier. And we said we hedged about a third. But the play is not on that. It's on the total. Now, if you know from our um, you know, love for Buffalo, we, we've been on them all year. Um, but NAU, Northern Illinois. My dad went to Northern Illinois, by the way, to college there. They have a great defense. Possibly the one of the best in the MAC, right? Maybe the best in the MAC. And it's going to be defense versus a great offense. Well, Buffalo is great at running the ball with Jared Patterson. They're great with passing with Tyreek Jackson to Anthony Johnson. People can't stop it. Their only weakness is stopping the run. Northern Illinois, on the other hand, can the run the ball halfway decent and can stop everything. But they can stop the pass and the run, but they can't pass the ball well at all. So who wins out? Well, a lot of Sharps like the team that can run the ball, that control the clock. They're sharp money on uh, Northern Illinois right now. Um, you know, Normally that game wins if they can get at least three and a half yards per carry. You see Army do it all the time. Just keep the ball out of the passing team's hand, right? Well, that's very possible, but I think that Lance Leopold has seen this before. The coach for Buffalo. He should be able to stack this box and stop NIU. Um, now, NIU... Like I said, halfway decent running, they only average 4.1 yards per rush. But that's on the lower side. A lot of their points were due to their defense putting them in great situations. Teams making stupid fourth and inches plays on their own 30-yard line, and NIU capitalizes. That's what's been happening all year. But if you're afraid of this, then it's probably a great live betting situation. Whoever scores first at least the first touchdown, you bet the side on that because, you know, Buffalo can get one-dimensional. NIU, if they have to pass the ball, they're completely screwed. But um, I actually still like Buffalo here. And uh, I think that the fact is the Ford Field. It's the, That's the key to this game. Ford Field. The turf, the dome. What do the domes favorite? The speedy, fast passing teams. No wind, fast running. That's why I love NIU in this game. Now, if it was a grassy, possible cold, wet field, it's it's, it's NIU. But in this case, you have to lean Buffalo here. But because of this, I ran it. You know, I ran this through our ag- uh, algorithm. I got this Buffalo winning by four points, the total exactly at 49.5. But that doesn't factor in that. That takes numbers from, you know, non-turf fields. So you got to add five, six points to this, this total here because they're playing at Ford Field. So I'm taking the over. And I think the over is going to be great if Buffalo especially jumps on a lead because Northern Illinois is going to be passing the ball. And that runs a lot less clock, as we know. Over 49 points. And go Bulls. You better lock it up. You better lock it up. No, you lock it up. You lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Please. All right. Alabama versus Georgia. Plus 13 and a half. 
oh yeah, we're hitting the big games. Now, you could possibly wait on this one if you like the Georgia side. It's probably going to get to 14 with all the public being on Bama. If you like Bama, I would bet it early. But we're going to give you our play here. And it's nice to have the plays on the big games because that's what everyone wants to hear, right? Well, here we are, the game we've been waiting for. You know, what can one say? This is probably the best Alabama or college football team in general that I've ever seen or that's ever been around. Bama with amazing defense finally gets an amazing offense. Uh, The Deshaun Watson Clemson team of a few years back may be the only one I've seen to rival this really. Uh, But uh, they didn't throughout the year. They didn't quite destroy everybody like Bama did. They've had a few small hiccups, but you know, close games. I think it's important to look at a few things here uh, before we look at this large spread. Georgia is a top four team, in my opinion, um, pretty close, right? And I think it's shocking to see this. The their top four, top five, whatever. I have to ask myself, who did Alabama play? You know, who did they play? It's it's rare to see a top five team dogs by 13 and a half points on a neutral field. Well, Alabama shut out the next two best SEC teams, LSU and Mississippi State. That should kind of tell you all you need to know, right? Especially since Georgia lost outright to LSU, right? Wrong. That Alabama-Mississippi State game would have been a much different game if the officials didn't botch that last TD with that phantom block in the back call. The Alabama guy falls down and they just throw a flag because he assumed something. Well, no, I know Bama still would have beat them by a lot. They would have been like 24-7 to 7 or something, right? It, it still would have been a good, a big victory. But um, another ga- glaring fact to me is that Alabama hasn't faced um, – a passing team ranked in the top 30 minus a terrible old Miss team. Terrible. Like one of the worst defense in, in the league. Worse than F. Uh, it's a lot of FBS teams, actually. Bama also hasn't faced a rushing team other than Mississippi State, who was pretty one-dimensional, that's even ranked in the top 50. Not even in the top 50. Okay. Alabama has had the easiest non-conference schedule in the nation. Louisville was supposed to be their big game, okay? Louisville. How'd they luck out like that? Getting Florida State last year, there was garbage. Now they get a garbage Louisville. Now they have to face a Georgia team with the same QB as last year and Jake Fromm, who is looking for revenge from last year's overtime championship loss. Now, you know I love revenge spots if it's the same quarterback and coach from the year before. That, that That's the main ingredients to revenge spots for me. At 6.3 yards per run and a 177 quarterback rating, this Georgia team can be all kinds of dangerous to Bama. Uh, Bama's got the highest variance in 3.6. Uh, net yards per play, getting eight on offense, only allowing 4.4 on defense. But Georgia isn't too shabby here. They get 7.4 yards per play on offense and only allow 4.8 on defense. That's only about a half yard net per play difference with Georgia having a little bit of a harder schedule than Bama. Because of all this, this game is, I think it's too high. And I think... Vegas sets it high because they know the public's going to bet Alabama, right? Hell, they could have put it at 16 and a half and it would have got to 17. It doesn't matter. Maybe the Sharps would have pounded it down to 14. I don't know. But my point is they set it higher because they know eventually more money is going to come in on Bama and they need to balance the action. I have this game 32 to 23. This should be a nine and a half point spread. And I also like the under. Um, I'm waiting on the under because I think that's going to get bet up too. But we're taking Georgia plus 13 and a half and smaller on the under. 
Um, Because obviously some crazy things could happen in this game. Kiss my butt! UAB versus Middle Tennessee State Ling minus one. Well, we've discussed UAB and how great of a season they had. Bill Clark, great coach. We've discussed this many times. We were on him a couple bets this year. I wish I was on him a little bit more. Um, but I think there's a reason why the Blue Raiders are favored in this game. Uh, first of all, last week these teams played each other because Marshall beat FI- FIU. This game all of a sudden became you know, a little bit more important. UAB could have got home field advantage. But with their injuries, I think they pulled some players and uh, decided not to, you know, show a lot and um, wanted to try to get back healthy. They're really decimated um, on the O line, and their um, running backs bit banged up. Now, you have a Middle Tennessee State team that has a healthy Brent Stockstill with a twenty-six to six TD to interception ratio, completing over seventy-one percent of his passes, and is playing at home. UAB cannot pass the ball well at all. A.J. Erdley having only a 7-7 TD to interception ratio at 56% completion percentage, okay? Not good. Now, UAB is also, like I said, very banged up. Their running back, Spencer Brown, missed last game. He ran one play and couldn't go, and... Maybe that was part of the coach, but uh, four of their offensive lines on the injury report. You know, if you look at UAB's schedule, they really had it pretty easy this year. Their schedule ranked 137th. 137th. That's worth uh, some uh, FCS teams. And Middle Tennessee State was a bit harder, ranking 102 due to playing teams like Kentucky. Georgia and Vanderbilt. You know, last week the Blue Raiders outgained the Blazers 394 to 89. Now, I don't care how much you're not trying this game, UAB. 89 yards is awfully telling to me. Now, the only thing that worries me is it's supposed to be thunderstorms and 15 miles per hour winds. Now, we saw what happened in the Washington State Washington game. The rain screwed it up, and Washington was able to run the ball all over. Right, that that happens. But I still think that even in the rain, that uh, Middle Tennessee State should be good enough to put this team away, especially with the injuries here. So, you know, UAB they get four point six yards per rush, playing that you know really bad schedule. And Middle Tennessee State, you know, ain't too shabby. 3.8 yards per rush, playing a harder schedule, so they can do it. Due to the injuries here, I still like Middle Tennessee State here, um, minus the point. And But I'll tell you this, if that weather report clears up, then I really like this game. And, uh, and then I think you should fire hard on Middle Tennessee State. Minus one all the way to minus four. All right. Our premium plays this week are starting with East Carolina versus NC State and Marshall versus Virginia Tech. And usually more premium plays come on as we get closer to game time and there's more line moves. Our quick hitter. We are taking Washington minus five versus Utah. This game's being played in Santa Clara, which feels a little bit more like a West Coast off the Ocean Huskies game. More importantly, it's out of the elevation. Uh, the Huskies have gotten very healthy the last couple weeks here. And, uh, you know, uh, I think they're running back and it, is doing awesome here, Haskins. And uh, Chris Pearson knows how to play this Utah team. You know, without their quarterback, Tyler Huntley, and running back, Zach Moss, for Utah, both got injured for the season last month. I think that that gives a huge advantage to the Huskies here. I mean, the Huskies went there and beat them pretty handily 21-7 to in 